Neil Peart versus John Bonham. I mean, should we even go there? So today we're going to talk about comparing Neil Peart to John Bonham, or Neil Peart versus John Bonham, or if it's even worth having that discussion, and if it's even worth settling that score, if that's something that, that some people feel that it's important to do. First off though, if you're new to the channel, please click the subscribe button below and click the notification bell so you can be notified anytime I post new content related to all things Rush. Okay, so what do I mean by comparing Neil Peart to John Bonham? Well, for starters, people like comparisons. People like pitting this person versus that person. People like lists and people like to know what other people think about their favorite whatever favorite drummer favorite guitarist singer and on and on but you know sometimes people take it a little seriously and take it like way over the the deep end they even get angry for even making the comparisons at all some people think that you know it's just about enjoying the music and you know it doesn't matter who's better if there is a better and for the most part i concur with that it really the bottom line is about enjoying the music it's not so much about comparing this person to that person and i wouldn't say i'm new to the game as far as comparing Neil Peart to John Bonham or figuring out who's better. Um, that's been done a bunch of times already, so why am I doing it now? Well, I've thought about it a long time, and I've also wondered if there was an objective way to determine if one drummer is better than the other. Not to put one down and one above, but just to see if there are things we could look at by what they did, by what they accomplished, what they published, if we can compare some of that and determine if this drummer was better at doing certain things than the other was, or if there's an unfair advantage that one has over the other as far as exposure goes. What, am I, what, am I, uh, what do I mean by that? For starters, if you compare how many albums Led Zeppelin has sold versus how many Rush has sold, it's like, you know, Rush is like a street performer compared to uh, Led Zeppelin. I think Led Zeppelin sold over 200 million records, like way more than that. And Rush has sold a mere 40 million, which is nothing to sneeze at. And they have their, you know, their records as, as well as far as uh, selling albums, albums and that kind of thing. But really no one can come close as far as rock bands go uh, to Led Zeppelin. I think, you know, ACDC, they've sold over 100 million records. Uh, I probably should have looked up these numbers, but I'm pretty close. I think those numbers are pretty close, but you know, Led Zeppelin, I mean, admittedly, they are the number one rock band of all time, at least as far as exposure goes. Were they the best at everything? No, but they really good <laughs> at pretty much everything. They came at a time where their sound, when Led Zeppelin one came out, it was just so different and so bombastic in your face that that was not heard before and it was it was really a great time uh, to play or to come up with that kind of music because it, it really had an impact on rock forever and Rush was a beneficiary of that you know the early Rush modeled themselves after uh, Led Zeppelin especially their first album it was very Led Zeppelin-esque and I would think uh, John Rutsey um, the original drummer of Rush Maybe you wanted to be like John Bonham because I think he sounded somewhat like him in a sense. But as far as if you base it on album sales, hands down, more people know who John Bonham is than who know Neil Peart, at least on a general level. If we're talking about the drum community, pretty much everyone knows who both of them are. So as far as making this as objective as possible, there's one thing we need to eliminate from the equation. John Bonham unfortunately died at the age of 32 on September 25th, 1980. And Led Zeppelin had only made eight studio albums at the time. I think they did another one after that. That was like a compilation. I forget the, what it's called. But really, there were officially eight studio albums with John Bonham until he died. So he was 32 and change. So there's, it, it would be unfair to compare Neil Peart's entire album repertoire to John Bonham's. If we want, if we do that, then Neil Peart is hands down the better drummer because he's, he did way more things. He got a chance to do way more things because he was alive longer. So it's kind of like not fair to do that. So to make it kind of fair, I looked to see how old these guys were at a certain time. I took some notes too. I have them right here. How old was John Bonham when he recorded his last album with Led Zeppelin? He was 31 years, two and a half months old. 
That's when they released In Through the Outdoor in August of 79. When Neil Peart was 31, and two and a half, 31 years, two and a half months old, it was late autumn 1983, and their last record that they released was Signals, which was in September of 1982. And actually, it was on September 9th, which was three days shy of Neil's 30th birthday. So the next album that Rush produced was Grace Under Pressure, which came out in April of 1984, when Neil was 31 years and seven months old. So to make a fair comparison, we really can only compare the albums that John Bonham made, that life, that span of time, versus Neil Peart's age at the same time that John Bonham made his last record. So we can only really compare Fly By Night to Signals, to uh, John Bonham's Led Zeppelin 1, to In Through the Outdoor. I think that would be a fair comparison. So let's forget everything that, ha oh, we can include the tours of each two, uh, the tour if we wanted to check out anything live, we could in include the tour of In Through the Outdoor and the Signals tour. But as far as Neil Peart goes, anything after that, Grace Under Pressure Forward does not exist because it's not fair because John Bonham wasn't here. So we can't make that comparison. So what about that span of time when they were about similar age, let's say, between John Bonham's eight albums with Led Zeppelin and Neil Peart's eight albums? We're not counting Rush's first album because he wasn't the drummer but his eight albums from Fly By Night to Signals. What can we say about that? Well, to prepare myself for this comparison, I did a lot of Led Zeppelin listening, and it's something I have never done before. I actually listened to all eight records straight through, which is not a bad thing, because Led Zeppelin, I mean, they're, they're pretty awesome. I mean, there's a lot of great music there. So pretty much from Led Zeppelin all the way through uh, In Through the Outdoor, and I also watched the live concert footage of The Song Remains the Same, which was the Houses of the Holy Tour in 1973. And I also watched some live footage, uh, a few songs. I couldn't really find a, a complete show, but uh, some live footage from the In Through the Outdoor Tour, um, Achilles' Last Stand, which is one of the songs that they played on that tour, which I think was on their Presence record. That's a great song, by the way. And I noticed, I looked at uh, John Bonham live playing from the song remains the same and that live performance of Achilles last stand from the in through the outdoor tour. And he was a different drummer. He was like, I mean, he was noticeably better. You know, when he was younger, he played a little more bombastically, but in the live footage from later years, he's, you can see that he's more controlled. I mean, he knows his stuff. I mean, muscle memory kicks in. You pretty much know your songs, you know, what to play when you, how you're playing them and how to conserve your energy in a long show and that kind of thing. So, I mean, he's, playing really well, you should go check it out. I'll actually include a link below to that Achilles Last Stand video of John Bonham. It, I mean, the whole band is really good, but uh, John's playing is, is pretty fantastic. But I did notice that throughout the whole span of Led Zeppelin's records, right from Led Zeppelin 1 all the way to the last one, to me, John Bonham's playing was pretty much the same throughout. There wasn't really much improvement or a lot of different things based on what I heard from the first album and going through successively, there were different types of styles being played. There were some slow songs and obviously there were the fast songs. They're the bombastic songs. Uh, you know, they're the, the classic tunes that everybody knows. I don't need to list them out here, but to me, his playing was pretty much the same throughout. And I think many would agree to that. It was definitely the foundation of that sound. There's no question that you hear a Led Zeppelin song and unless there's no drums in it. John Bonham is a force. He's a presence in the band. But I think that's part of why he's so popular and why he's considered such a great drummer. Deservedly so, because he was in Led Zeppelin. I mean, everybody is an elite artist in that band. So he's playing to their level and he's playing to the type of music that they play, which, which is pretty straight ahead rock and roll. There were elements of progressive rock that seeped in uh, from time to time and later, later times. And Achilles' Last Stand is probably an, an example of that. But for the most part, his drumming style didn't change. It was pretty much the same. Now, if you listen to Neil Peart from Fly By Night through Signals, there's a whole bunch of different styles. Not so much styles, but they were a progressive metal band. So they're playing all these different time signatures and they're writing stories like, you know, 2112 and Hemispheres. And there's all different types of drumming involved to create a visual experience 
from the audit auditory experience. And each of the three guys in that band were also elite artists themselves in creating that space and creating that atmosphere. And Neil was not just a drummer, he's also a percussionist. So as the years went by, his kit grew. And I've seen drummers that have big kits and a lot of them are just for show. And I don't want to say any names. I, I have one in my head. There's a drummer that I, I really want to say <laughs> he had a really big kit. I don't want to put him down, but he didn't use all that. He had double bass drums and all these drums, but you know, it just wasn't used. But Neil, absolutely every single piece of his kit he used and it always served the song. It was never overly played, but tastefully played. But there were a lot of intricate, there was a lot of intricate playing. There was a lot of different compositions of drum patterns to satisfy the type of music they were playing. And each album that went along and along, it just got better and better. And I think if someone were to listen to Led Zeppelin's catalog up to In Through the Outdoor, and they just listened to the drumming or paid more attention to the drums, and if they did the same thing with Fly By Night all the way to Signals for Neil Peart and, you know, whether you like the bands or not, if we're talking about comparing the drummers, we just we're trying to see which drummer was the better drummer. I would say all around Neil Peart was the better drummer because you can tell his progression over the years. He just got better and better and better, whereas uh, John Bonham's style pretty much stayed the same from beginning to to the end. It's so another thing, too, that I thought of, could Neil Peart play in Led Zeppelin? And I think he could play in Led Zeppelin. I think he would actually introduce more complexity that would still fit into what the band was doing. But I don't think the same would be in reverse. I think John Bonham would be an exaggerated version of John Rutsey, actually. Not that they were the same uh, as far as ability, because I think, obviously, John Bonham was a sp substantially better drummer than John Rutsey. But... John Bonham was a rock drummer. I wouldn't consider him necessarily a progressive rock drummer. And they definitely rushed the band, definitely would not have progressed in the style that they ended up doing with Neil if they had a drummer like John Bonham in the band. And I think of songs that I think Bonham would find difficult to play or would not have come up with. I think of songs like La Vira Strangiato. Um, and I think of songs like Free Will, where the instrumental breakdowns in parts of those songs, I, I don't think that John Bonham could have pulled that off the way Neil Peart did. I just think Neil Peart is more of a compositional drummer, more creative drummer in that sense. But I think John Bonham fit perfectly for what Led Zeppelin did. So it depends really ultimately what you feel is important. If you feel like a really steady groove and bombastic drumming is what makes the ideal rock drummer and I think that does make the ideal drummer, then John Bonham wins that because Neil was not that type of drummer. He's not a bombastic, he wasn't a bombastic drummer with like big, huge sounds. His sound always fit into the three. None of the members of the band overshadowed any of the other ones. They were all very cohesive in their sound and intricate in their sound, which is why I think by the time Neil's ability in signals compared to John Bonham's drumming ability in In Through the Outdoor, I think if you look at the technical drumming aspect, I think that Neil Peart surpasses John in that sense. So in my estimation, Neil Peart is the better drummer of the two. Now, that's my opinion based on technical ability, and it's my opinion based on Neil's knack for composition, and the fact that he had an advantage that he was the lyricist for the band, so he could he gave the lyrics to the other two guys. They finagled the music and rearranged a couple of the lyrics maybe. But in the, in the end, Neil knew the lyrics so he could create his drum parts based on what he knew already. And he could play to the singer, which was a huge advantage as well. One thing I'd like to do, I'm gonna include a link below to a video um, that's on the, on the YouTubes of Rush during their Signals tour. And the video quality is not that good, and the sound quality is not that good, but, but it is good enough. It's um, Rush playing Free Will during the Signals tour, and they're playing really fast. Got a tempo, I don't think they've ever played it that fast. They didn't play it that fast before. 
and I don't think they played it that fast after that tour either. But Rush fans know the instrumental breakdown in the middle of that song, how technically difficult that is. And they're playing it super fast. And you can hear every single hit that Neil Peart does in that instrumental breakdown, in the whole song, but that, that part in the middle. When I heard that, and I, I thought of other drummers that could possibly pull that off, and it, I, I mean, I can't think of any, <laughs> really. Um, and I don't think John Bonham could play like that either. So, you know, I'm trying to see if there's concrete evidence, not so much going on feeling, because if you go by feeling, everybody's right, because it's your feeling, it's your opinion. Everybody has an opinion and they're all valid and everybody's feelings are valid too. But I've been trying to find concretely if I could compare these two drummers and see which one would stand out more. And I think from a technical perspective and I think from a compositional perspective, which those things are important to me, I think Neil Peart wins that. Now, in saying all of that, does that mean that you know I have to like Neil Peart better because I think he's a better drummer? No. Does that mean that I, I can demean another drummer and say, well, they're not that good and even, or they're not as good, or I can like argue to the point of getting angry because someone is not agreeing with my opinion? No, it's not about that at all. I think that we can have these, this, this, these discussions, these comparisons, and I, and I think that that's expected because that just makes us dig deeper and see not only that we feel that someone is better, but when someone challenges us as to, well, I think this person's better, then you start talking about little details. Then you start digging in and you actually end up appreciating the music more. You end up appreciating the artist more and you just end up enjoying all of it. And that's really the bottom line. It's not to poke fun at someone else. It's not to demean someone else's ability. It's really to appreci appreciate everybody's ability. Lastly, I think I wanna say there comes a level of excellence in musicianship that they're all best. They're, they're all they're all the best. So you have drummers like Neil Peart, like John Bonham, like Phil Collins, I'll put up there, well, main, in the 70s mainly, uh, Carl, Carl Palmer. I'm thinking drummers that are from that era, mostly. And I do wanna say, give one shout out to Alan White of Yes. And I'm actually gonna put a link below to the uh, Tormato tour of Yes from 78, 79. And a lot of people don't know this, but Alan White was an absolute beast animal of a drummer when he was younger. I'm going to put a link to their performance of Heart of the Sunrise that they performed in that tour in the late 70s. And whether you like Yes or not, I think it's worth listening to this song. It's a 10 minute plus song because, you know, it's Yes. They're a progressive rock band, That's like the ultimate progressive rock band. And every member of that band is a virtuoso artist and Alan White just keeps up with him. He, I mean, he's not at like that type of virtuoso progressive. I mean, he, he ended up being in a progressive rock band, but he's really a rock drummer, but you need to listen to this song, the drumming in his song. It's like John Bonham esque, but even a little higher level. And many, many people don't know that. I think Alan White is a very underappreciated drummer and I'm going to put a link below to that performance. So look out for that too. But in the end, in the end, I think I've heard that song before. Neil Peart versus John Bonham. I mean, my preference, because this is an all about Rush YouTube channel. Uh, I may pick Neil Peart in that case, but for the reasons I've expressed here, it's not so much my feeling, although it is my feeling, but I just wanted to put out there the actual reasons why I think that Neil Peart ended up being a better drummer than John Bonham was, just comparing their contemporary music that they published during the times they were of the same age. Because I think anything, any other type of comparison would be unfair. And that's it. That's my comparison of Neil Peart and John Bonham. I hope you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please subscribe if you haven't done it already and click the notification bell so you can be notified whenever I come up with new content. Let me know what you think below. You think I'm full of you know what, <laughs> that uh, Neil Peart ended up being the better drummer in my eyes. Or if there are other drummers that you feel are underrated, put those in the comments as well. And let me know why, because uh, my passion musically is the drums. I really love keyboards and piano too, but I ended up playing the drums. I love the drums. So I've studied Neil Peart a lot and I actually consider him my teacher as far as music and drumming goes. Because once I heard Tom Sawyer for the first time, that might be fodder for another video. Neil Peart was the man as far as drumming goes. So that's it. 
I'll see you in the next video.